We'll know now because the trainer who's representing the two runners here is talking to Alistair. Yes, he is talking to me indeed. Raincoat, a sheepskin nose band, the boys talk about it. Why is that? Well, there's a huge crowd here today, you know. I've never seen so many stretch limos when people turn up. This guy's going around collecting the litter. They can't do it fast enough. He just jumped a couple of pigeons on the track early in the morning at home, and then a bit of paper on the track might just cause him to hop. I thought, put the sheepskin so on, he won't do that. That gives him something to look at. And... Well, I don't want him to think he's taking a hurdle. <laughs> and the car note, what news? He's in good form. Mm. Both horses in exceptionally good form. He had Someone's a good... got to take Aiden on, you know. He had a good break before York. Yes. And... You know, how's he pleased you since Very then? Very much so. He's done two lovely pieces of work on the bridle. Couldn't be happier with him. Uh, one on the round, one on the trial. I was really pleased with the horse. So give Aidan something to think about. Well, we need to, don't we? Cheers. Thanks, John. Problems at the stalls, they're not opening, they're now going. Well, that was an awkward moment there. One or two of them trying to anticipate Marla and Veracity, notably. In the early stages, Raincoat's up on the outside in the noseband. Acapulco taking a forward position with Marla in the all-dark blue jacket under Mick Canan as they race through the first furlong in the Labrick St. Ledger of 2007. Marla leads to Acapulco and Raincoat. Maroon with the white sleeves, Veracity on the inside. White jacket out wide is Lucano. Racing between the pair in pink is Samuel. And they're followed out the back then by MacArthur, with also Honolulu Celestial Halo and Regal Flush is held up by Ryan Moore in last position. Continuing along the back straight then towards Rose Hill, when they climb the hill, they'll have about a mile and a quarter left to cover. Mick Canan steals a half glance on the leader, Marla, whose stamina is certainly assured here. In second place is Acapulco, raincoat to the outside of Veracity. Samuel is just in behind these. And then a couple of lengths to Lucano. Honolulu, having gone off the 13-8 to 8 favourite, is third last at the moment in the purple cap worn by Johnny Murta as Marla, one of his stable companions, continues to make it from another O'Brien runner Acapulco in second. Veracity is third on the inside of Samuel with Raincoat posted three horses wide. Two lengths away to Locarno. Then MacArthur, the horse with the white face inside of Honolulu. Celestial Halo is second last and still looking on and about 10 lengths off the pace is Regal Flush. They're beginning the long left-hand turn now, which will eventually will bring them home and it's Marla that continues to make the pace here by a length to Acapulco. It looks a good even gallop. Veracity's up the inside, Raincoat out wide in fourth, followed by Samuel. These are tracked then by Lucano further back. After Lucano is MacArthur, the inside of Honolulu. Those two keep each other company from Celestial Halo and Regal Flush. It just looks as though Mick Canan is really trying to stretch them now on Marla as they swing this left-hand turn. They've got five furlongs left to cover and Marla is going to ensure this is a real test here. Marla from Acapulco who's bustled along. Veracity on the inside as they turn in. Raincoat to the left on the outside. MacArthur creeping forward from Samuel. Then after these is Lucano from Celestial Halo. Honolulu towards the outside and Regal Flush is last. Marla still ratcheting up the pressure as they run down inside the final three. Marla chased hard by Veracity, then Acapulco, MacArthur on the far side making ground. Out wide Lucano with a bit of a run now, beginning to eat up the going, and then Honolulu is taking off as well. Looks set for a great finish. Regal Flush staying on from the rear. They race inside the final quarter. Marla from Veracity challenged by Lucano, the outside. MacArthur far side, and the favourite Honolulu is running on down the near side with Regal Flush inside the final furlong, Lucano strikes the front from Marla. It's Lucano kicks a length clear of Marla, who's trying to fight back, but racing up towards the line. The Derby fourth, Lucano wins the St. Ledger. Lucano wins from Marla in second. Tight for third between Honolulu and Regal Flush. Well, John Golson going to greet his classic winner. A great thump on the thigh for Jimmy Fortune. <laughs> Well, John, two great bits of work in the lead-up and a classic ledger preparation. Fourth and Derby, great vulture, yes. job done. Yeah, I think it's a lovely pattern, that, you know. If you're good enough to be fourth at Epsom, 
in an exceptionally good derby with authorised, and uh, then you can go and win your Voltager. And he's really turned the corner, this horse, Voltager, onwards. Yes, he has. But he's been a very good horse all along. I mean, he's second first time out in the hottest maiden of the year, first race of his life, so he's always been a very good horse. And we'll put him away now, and he'll be a lovely horse for next year. Job done, well done. Thank you. Really nice individual, James Wigan on the left there of John Gosden, who manages the horses for George Strawbridge. Who's and there on the right? Who's there? Who's there on the right? He's uh, he's been remarkably successful. Had a lot of good horses, of course, with Ian Baldin. But this horse, he's just beautifully mannered. I watched him go down to the start. They were struggling just to get the uh, lead rope off of him, just waiting until the ladder finally undone the buckle, turned around. He's well bred, Jim. Yeah, he's by Dynaform, and owned in America as Big D. He's a great big horse by Roberto. Very few American horses at top level get the chance to run a mile and a half, and this horse not only did that, he won. So he is a strong influence of stamina. Vignette, the dam, was actually just a disappointment. She was quite fussy and hot, and they actually brought her back to six furlongs, having started her off early. And that's where the doubt for some people, in think, including his connections, uh, existed with regard to the trip. But it was all to no avail. He stays really well. He's just a grand horse. Full stop. John Gosden's second ledger, of course, he won with uh, Shantou in 1996, well, yeah. and he was also second five years before that with his first ever runner, Sones. <laughs> Well, we'll be off to the Curra shortly for the Irish St. Ledger, where the age ranges from 3 to 11. But the final classic of the season has gone to John Gosden, the unfeignedly helpful and always really lucid trainer who tells you beforehand he was dead happy. Not as happy as he is now. And on the, in the St. Ledger... And John Gosden, his second ledger, and a job really well done. This horse refreshed and brought back for Voltager and ledger glory, taking the old route to riches. And, of course, if you win the ledger, you get to wear the daftest hat in Doncaster. And, of course, it's never anything but a pleasure to do so. And this year it was Jimmy Fortune who got the soppy, the soppy tip for award. John Gosling goes out of shot. Lots of hands shaking around the place. And it was Jimmy Fortune's day. And there you are. That's the price you pay for putting all that money in the bank. A daft at.